Hey everyone, I am here today to show you my first Paula Young wig. This is Becky in the color 812 with a number 6, or 812A I should say, with a number 6 root. So Becky in the color 8 slash 12A with a number 6 root. Look at the curls on Becky. Oh my gosh, you guys. Becky is adorable. Stunning. And she required very little out of the box. I do have an out of the box. All I did to Becky is I sprayed at the root. She had box hair mainly here and she, she was quite flat at the root. So I sprayed around the root area and I shook it out and then I hung her upside down. She's been hanging upside down for three days, four days. Uh, and I did very little. These curls came out of the box. So I'm just going to show you these curls all around. Um, super, super adorable. Aren't these curls stunning? Stunning, I tell you. Look at them. They are so cute. All right, so like I said, Becky came out of the box with some box hair sort of at the root, but that's really it. Uh, she just looked so good that I didn't want to spray all these curls down. I didn't feel that they were needed. Something I have noticed is because she's so curly, um, she might want to get a little frizzy. I'm noticing this side right here is wanting to frizz up a little bit compared to this side. So we'll talk a little bit about that and some remedies that you can try. Um, other than that, wow, I am super thrilled with this one. So um, for those of you though who are not used to super curly hair, this one is going to overwhelm you. Just know that out of the gate. I'm not saying don't try her, but she is so curly. It's interesting though because she doesn't have a ton of permatease and I was told that Polly Young wigs are full of permatease. Well, I purchased two, a Becky and a Chloe. Chloe is full of permatease on the top. Becky though, not so much. She has a little bit of permatease like right here. Just a tiny, tiny, I mean, honestly, it's not even pillowy. It's just a little bit of permatease, like the crimpy fibers, but I don't feel pillowy permatease really anywhere on Becky. She does have a good amount of hair, but again, it's not super high hair density. I think it's just there's, the curls are so um, pronounced that it gives her the appearance of having a lot of hair and a lot of volume, and it's just not that much hair. So. Um, I don't know if I'm helping you guys because it's kind of hard to describe, but I would say she's not like poofy, pillowy, permatease, super high hair density at all. So, so cute though. Very, very cute. One of the reasons why I purchased Becky is because she has a lace front and a mono part. And I really, really wanted some cat features. Whereas Chloe just has a lace front, I do, I prefer lace fronts and mono parts or tops just some monofilament. That's my personal preference. I do have some basic cap wigs. I love Broadway by Main Attraction and that's a full basic cap. So I'm not knocking basic caps. I'm just kind of explaining my preferences. So that's why I bought her. So let's take a look at this lace front because one thing I want to say is it is a little knotty and I'm going to talk a little bit about that and maybe show you what you can do about it. It's not terrible though. It's really not terrible. I have seen much, much worse lace fronts. There you go. So you can get a kind of a view of that lace front. Now most people aren't gonna be looking at you like this. <laughs> you know, they're gonna be looking at you probably from like a distance, maybe like this. And in that case, it's really not that bad. Um, you know, she is kind of, chin length on me. I'm eight inches from my hairline to my chin. So she's kind of chin length. This side is heavily layered, which honestly I love with these curls because it just, it gives these curls just this beautiful, it kind of spills on each other. Whereas this side is a lot longer and the curls just lay a lot differently over here. Something that as I'm looking at it in the mirror, I may 
want to like trim up or thin just slightly this side because it's kind of so heavy in length. But again, these are all sort of personal preference things. So um, one thing I've noticed, I think the cat fit fits me really snug um, around my circumference and I am 22 inches around and I, I've let this wig all the way out and it's still kind of snug. So I would say if you're bigger than 22 inch circumference, um, this one might fit you snug. But something that I've learned recently and that I want to pass on to you guys is if you have a wig that you love and it fits you well everywhere else but around your circumference, it's, it's snug, like it's doable but it's a little snug, you can cut the adjusters. It doesn't damage the cap and it gives you that extra room. So let's just look at this cap for a minute. Oh, that feels a little bit better. It is kind of snug. So when you've got, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of adjusters they are, Velcro adjusters, pull, like bra strap adjusters, hook adjusters, any adjusters will put a little bit of tension on here, even if you have them all the way out. An exception could be the hook adjusters because you can get those, you can unhook them fully and then they don't really leave the same tension. But something like this, there is still a little bit of tension there even if I've got them all the way out. So something that I have learned, one of the ways I learned it is because I got a wig from a wig sister, a girl mono actually, and one of the adjusters broke and that girl mono is actually kind of loose on me. And then I watched a, a review by Mimi's Wig, Mimi's wig Boutique. Uh, they're a, a wig uh, store, brick and mortar store in, I believe, Texas. And they have a great YouTube channel. You really should watch these ladies if you don't already. But they just did a video on um, how one of them, and I'm forgetting her name, the one who usually wears the blondes, uh, her mom is the one who is Mimi. She um, loves Jolie. Uh, and she has to cut the adjusters because Jolie's snug on her. And so cut away. If you know you're going to keep the wig and you love everything but it's a little snug, I say just cut those adjusters off and it's going to give you a little bit of room. I don't know how much it will expand, honestly. So if the wig is unwearable, it's so tight, I don't know if you'll get enough. But if it's you can wear it, but it gives you a headache or it's just a little tight. I really think that you can get enough just by cutting those adjusters and releasing that tension, okay? So just keep that in mind as a tip. So let's look at this cap. It's a really nice cap. Um, it's got the lace front and the mono part. It has nice soft ear tabs with metal stays and there's a lot of hair sewn into those ear tabs. Extended nape and Velcro adjusters. It really, this cap has all the bells and whistles which is amazing for this price point. And like I said, there is not a lot of permatease in her. When I show the top here, let's see if I can get to focus. I mean, I can part the hair and get down to the cap. It's not, when you've got a pillow of permatease, you can see that permatease on the top when you part the hair. You can't really get to the cap because the permatease is a pillow. This does not have that. And then just look at these curls. I mean, she's just stunning. And then this color, it's also called, I believe it's also called Pecan. I think it's called Pecan Delight. It doesn't say that anywhere on the box, but I'm pretty sure on the website it said Pecan Delight, um, 812 number six root. So an eight is a medium golden brown, and a 12 is a light brown, and it is very well blended. And then the root is a six. It's a very good root. It's not a dark, dark root. And it's like a shadow. I just love rooting like this. To me, this is the most realistic rooting. It's close enough to the base color. So it's a six root. The base color is an eight. So it's close enough to the, the base color that it just gives a slight shadow. And it's not, it's not like long root. So if you're, uh, you know, if you're on the fence about rooting, sometimes you think it can look unnatural. Not at all on this color. And then this is just such a pretty brown. I will get outside for you guys. It's just, I would just say it's a medium, it's a kind of a medium dark golden brown. <laughs> and it's got, I mean, the 12 is ever so slightly highlighted in here, 
but between the curls and how they've placed the different colors, it doesn't look highlighted. It really doesn't. It just looks golden and a little sun-kissed, but not highlighted. I was actually a little nervous because in some of the videos I've seen on this color, um, I thought it was just kind of too bland looking. I like highlighted wigs. I really do. I like some dynamic color. I mean, if I'm going to Go, you spend money on a wig. I kind of don't want just basic brown. That's me. Um, I didn't start this way. I'll tell you that at all. I liked my basic dark brown when I started. Um, I just honestly, I love this color. It's so beautiful. If you like kind of warm, golden, medium dark browns, I would say this is a perfect color. And if you don't want really obvious highlighting, but you like just there's a little something something about it that this has. Um, let's talk about the cap fit on me besides the circumference and then I do want to show the um, parting because the one thing I have noticed is because of the way that they have sewed the hair on and because of how much curl there is and it goes all the way up you really can't see the parting on here so there really isn't the mono I mean in order to see it you have to do that and obviously you're not going to do that when you're wearing it so the benefit you get of the mono part is just the realism and in, in the parting and how it lays and then the fact that if it didn't have that monofilament it probably would need more permatees because permatees is what disguises the hair from the cap if so in basic cap wigs one of the reasons why there's so much permatees is because there's no other way to hide the hair sewn into the cap whereas on a monofilament they can do that. They, they don't need the permatease for that. So I would say if you want visible parting, you're not getting it on this one, you can try to pluck a little bit. Um, but I do think it just gives that realistic look. Um, the ear tabs come way down on this, way down. So here's a little bit of my bio hair. I mean, on a lot of wigs, I have more bio hair showing. I don't have very much showing on this one. The ear tabs come way, way down. This could be, that could make this tricky with glasses. Um, so, you know, there's techniques you can do, but if you wear glasses all day, every day, and your measurements are similar to mine, you would have to look at all my measurements though. Um, you might struggle a little bit with all day glass wearing with this one. I just think the ear tabs come really low, which I think is good for realistic. It just may not be good for glasses. So let's move on quickly here so I can show you some of the other thoughts I had about this. I love it. I honestly love this wig. She is absolutely adorable. It's a very, very curly wig though, very curly. So a couple of things. First, because with budget wigs, I think, you know, you have to be prepared to make them your own in some ways. And, you know, I don't know... This is such a good one. I, I'd, have, I'd have paid a lot more for this actually than, than I did um, because of the quality. I think it feels, the high fair fibers feel great. Obviously, I don't know what the longevity will be, but um, Polly Young has, has a following. So anyway, so let's talk about the knotting. Okay, so I already told you a little bit about that knotting. I am not bothered by this knotting. I could, and you know, one thing I love to do with curly wigs is accessories. So I could pull this front up and I could put a little clip you know to kind of get the hair off my face that's not gonna bother me I'm not gonna worry that people are gonna look at it what I do know though is it's it's obvious enough that I do think I have wig sisters who would be bothered by it so what I do is I just take translucent powder this is just like covergirl or Maybelline or it's just a drugstore and it's um translucent this is a translucent medium. You could do translucent light, whatever works for you. And then just like a little brush, a brush that picks up a good amount of powder though. You know, you want one that's got enough bristle that it will pick up a good amount of powder. And so then I just take some of that and then I just go in. It's hard to do on my little tiny screen, but then I just dab it on the very front of that lace. So let me pick up a little more. I'm kind of, I'm trying to show you and see what I'm doing behind and I'm not, I don't think I can do both successfully. <laughs> um, and I just dab it. Now I'm going to get a little on the hair. That's okay. I can get that off. All right. So I dab translucent powder on and then I just kind of want to do this and get a little off the hair. So now, and I, I may need to take a little cloth to it, but, and now... Please focus. 
I just think those knots are not as obvious. So I could do more if I wanted to. I could do um, more of a foundation if I wanted to. If I really wanted to disguise those, you could spend some good time on that. But I personally think translucent powder works really well if the knotting is just moderately bothersome and not a deal breaker kind of knotting. So keep some translucent powder on hand. Just get something from the dollar store even. It doesn't have to be super high quality. Um, and just for, for times like that. I also use that translucent powder to put on the part on, on like my John Renault wigs. They make great parting space on their wigs and they're perfect candidates for a little translucent powder to make that uh, look just a little lighter. So that's a good tip. So something else I want to talk about is when you have a super curly wig, and um, let me grab a couple of other things here. I have so many products, you guys. It's almost embarrassing, to be honest with you. Um, I just wish you guys could be right here in my bathroom with me. <laughs> uh, and so I, I think, you know, I have told you in videos, I don't like to use a lot of product on my wigs. I just, my personal experience with wigs so far is the less product you put on them, the better. The longer they'll last, the more infrequently you'll have to wash them, and all of those things extend the life of a wig. I will spray my wigs with product occasionally if they're starting to feel really dry, or if you know I'm like a couple of wears away from a wash, I do try to go seven to 12 wears before I wash a wig as much as I can. I've gone as many as 15, and I just give it a smell test. If it doesn't smell, then I don't need to wash it. I mean, whatever, whatever you think of that. But um, having just a little spray can help a curly wig like this to not get frizzy. So one of the things that I bought was this weave and wig. See when I'm, when it can see my face, it won't focus on anything else. There we go. Weave and wig. I got this on Amazon. This is just a tiny little two ounce bottle. This is tangerine, mango, olive, shea butter, tea tree. And you know, I've got Aesthetica Revitalize and Shine. This stuff is fantastic. Again, let me get out of the frame. Um, something that you could really try with a curly wig is this Simply Stylin. Now I have two Simply Stylins. One, and this is, oh, this is gone. This one's a spray. This one's a kind of a more of a gel. This is lighter and this one's heavier. So let me just show you what you can do. So I could take this little tangerine spray and it'll give it kind of a fresh little citrusy smell. And I could just spray a little bit on and I might need to do that if I want to refresh it. I'm just doing a little spray and then I'm doing that. It's just going to coat the fibers just a little bit and it may keep them from frizzing. This side though is a lot frizzier and so I may use a little bit of the Simply Stylin Silk and I'll put, if I can find the product somewhere, I'll link it in the description so you can at least go someplace to buy it. I do try to link Amazon when I can um, and then I just put a little bit on my fingers and you can see they're kind of shiny and then I'll just kind of do this with the frizzy parts. I don't want to do too much. I don't want to weigh this down, but I also want to try to help. And I also don't want to make it frizzier by playing with it too much. So it's kind of a delicate balance. But this, I, and I just love the way this one smells. It smells way better than the spray one, the um, Simply Silent Spray. But I don't know if you can tell the difference, but already, those frizzies are much reduced. So that is something, it can also be used to tame the curls a little bit if you wanna weigh them down just slightly. But just doing something like that can really help a curly wig. I would say curly wigs like this are gonna be higher maintenance because you don't wanna comb them and you really don't even wanna finger comb them that much because you will start to frizz those, fi those fibers. So keep that in mind. I just want to show you the back again because it's really adorable. All right, so I'm going to get outside for you guys. So the and and the cap, I do have the extra room up here that I typically do. So if your measurements are bigger than mine over the top of the head, you're covered. This will fit you great. It's really just that circumference. You know, I think it's 
22 inches is kind of the max and and you know you can always cut those adjusters all right this has been long so I'm gonna wrap it up but I wanted to just I want to give you a few of those tips because if you really want to try a curly wig I want you to, to know that you may need to expand and get a few products if you don't already have them I mean I have so many because over the years I've just tried different things the years it hasn't even been two years but I have one product that I really love and I'm not finding it here it smells terrible when you spray it on I can't find it but anyway so I have a bunch of stuff and I think it's just all trial and error um, so I'll get outside and show you this color so what do I think of Becky I give Becky two thumbs up Becky is adorable she is stunning the curls are everything a curly girl would ever want um, maybe more maybe a little much um, and I'm gonna wear her so that I can come back and report on how these curls actually wear. This is one I'm gonna hang on to. Sometimes I buy wigs and then I sell them because a girl can only wear so many wigs and I do like to review wigs, so sometimes I buy them just to review them. But this one I wanna wear because I wanna tell you guys how do these curls hold up. Um, she's so cute. So if you've been eyeing Becky and you can do curly, you have to be able to do curly. Don't be afraid of it. the permities. It's minimal. Don't be afraid of it being too much hair. The curls make it feel like a lot of hair. It's really not a lot of hair. Not in my opinion. When I do this, I can feel cap right away, all the way around. That just tells me it's not a lot of hair. So anyway, that's, that's it. So stick around for the outside look and for the unboxing. Let me know if you have questions. And I have one more Polly Young wig to review, and then I'll kind of reevaluate and see if there's others I want to get. I'm trying to sell some wigs before I buy more wigs. So if you're in the market for wigs, go to my, my website, heywigsister.com. I do sell, I post my wigs there before I post them anywhere else. So you could get yourself a good deal. I do try to price them well so that I'm, you know, I want to help you guys as well, but then I just turn around and I use that money to buy more wigs or more things I can share with you guys. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hey everyone, this is kind of impromptu, but I thought I'd get on here and just show you Becky. At the end of the day, I have had her on now for, what time is it? Probably about 12 hours. And so this is what she looks like. I actually don't have any of my ring lights on, so hopefully the lighting's okay. I'll give you the look all the way around. So my impression at the end of the day after wearing her is I am in love. Just love this. It is so beautiful. This wig is so comfortable. Um, I mean, just look at how great the curls still look. I did nothing. I, you know, I've, I've had her on all day. I haven't combed her. I haven't sprayed her. I um, went grocery shopping. I got home. I've done, I cooked dinner. I got all sweaty at one point, like really sweaty. And she's just a champ. This wants to do this every now and then <laughs> and all I have to do is sweep her to the side and it stays there because the curls kind of take care of each other so I am giving Becky two thumbs up she is adorable she's super comfortable the curls stay looking beautiful I mean just just fabulous there's nothing about this wig that I don't love so anyway just wanted to share that with you guys all right my friends it is the end of a super long day and it's like 93 degrees outside. My makeup has completely sweated off, but I got hair mail today. I got my Polly Young order. So I'm gonna film the out of the box for Becky, which is this girl right here. And um, you've already seen the rest of the video, so you know what she winds up looking like, but Again, I would like to show the out of the box so that you can see what came in the mail. Okay, so I haven't even shaken her out yet because I thought about this. If I shake her out, that's not exactly out of the box. And you, if you have want to consider returning, are not going to be able to shake a wig out really um, for fear of not being able to return. And it looks like they have a really good return policy. So. 
which I plan to talk about in the other part of the video. So I just wanna show the out of the box. So this is her, I did take the tag off, but that's all I've done. Well, I put her on my head to make sure that I didn't need to return her. And we got box hair, like major box hair, mega box hair. You can see, it's like she's just smashed and very, very much box hair up here. Now, if you're new to the wig journey, you're not necessarily gonna know if this is fixable. Um, I remember early on, I would get my wigs, especially the curly ones, and they would come looking something like this, and it was so deflating and disappointing. I mean, you just wanna pull that wig out and put it on and then wear it. I mean, seriously, you just that's what we want. That's not what we get most of the time, especially with curly wigs. So one of the first things you're gonna do is you're gonna shake the tar out of this wig. Like you really need to shake and kind of wake those fibers up, get them off the cap. Um, and so that's kind of the first thing that you should really do. And then I often kind of do this, like I do vibrating with my fingers on it. I'm not really pulling at the hair. I'm just kind of vibrating on the fibers, uh, on the cap actually, because I want to start to wake up the fibers off of the cap. That's going to be really critical. You know, she has been living in a box for who knows how long. Um, let's see how much that helped. It's not going to be enough, I promise you. Not for this amount of box hair. But it did help a lot. Look at that. Already, she is so much better. Now there is still a lot of box hair right here. And in my experience, the only thing that's gonna help that is water. But wow, that helped so much. Um, that's really good. So that's given me a lot of hope. So now the next thing that I could do is I could soak her in water or I could spray her with water. I am super loving these curls, like super loving them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my spray bottle of water and I'm gonna really spray the cap a lot, like right at the right at the part line here and on the top and in the front, I'm really gonna get that wet because what I wanna do is I really wanna um, get, the, get the box hair out of here. So I usually do this in my shower, which I probably am gonna end up doing, but I'm just kind of showing you. So I really wanna get it on there. I'm not gonna soak this whole wig because I'm just loving these curls. They're just gorgeous. So I don't feel the need to soak the whole wig, but I definitely wanna get that um, hair on the cap going. And then because she has a part, which I'm super excited about, um, and she sort of has a zigzag part, I am gonna have to get at that, but I'm gonna wait and just see what happens. So I'm gonna spray all of this really, really well. Once it's really wet, I'm gonna do some more shaking and then, you know, kind of more vibrating, a little bit of scrunching. All of this isn't really gonna be wet because I'm not gonna soak the whole thing. Sometimes I will if I think the curls need help. I don't think that here. And then when I'm all done with that, I'm gonna hang her upside down. I'm gonna have to make room, I see. Um, I'm just getting lazy. I have to put a few of those away and let her dry. And then we'll see what we have, which you'll have already seen. So that's my plan. And I'm, I'm thinking she's gonna be really cute. I am, so I'm not worried about that box hair. Thanks for watching you guys. Hey everyone, here I am with the color 812A, number six, Pecan Delight, I think, uh, from Polly Young, outside. I'm standing in the shade of a tree right now because it's the sun's in just the wrong spot. And this is on Becky. We walk around here, get some sunlight on this color. It is such a pretty, pretty brunette. I can get in some shade now with a white background, sort of a solid background. So pretty. I just love this color. And it does have a root, but as you can see, it's so subtle. 
I'll go around the side of the house here. Let's see if I can. Sometimes that sun can really throw off how something films. What's this? Okay, so let's see if I can get the rooting. A little tricky when I have my phone. Sorry about the wobble. Hopefully I got that. It's just such a subtle, subtle root. It's very, very subtle. Such a beautiful color. Not really highlighted, but has some golden hint to it. Just really, really pretty. All right, and Becky is fabulous. I'm about to go run errands so that I can get an opportunity to wear this one. And I'll share all my impressions. Thanks for watching.